Okay, now down to the last two. And come on, don't make me train you for another thousand episodes. Hey, what's up guys? It's Sean here, and today on The Computer Scientist, we're gonna train a neural network to learn how to play Atari Breakout. Basically, this game involves a ball that bounces around a room of floating bricks, and the player is controlling a paddle where the idea is to move the paddle left or right to stop the ball from hitting the bottom. And the overall goal is to rebound the ball to eventually hit and destroy all of the bricks. So first we need to create the game, but I'm going to do this in Unity because I'm too lazy to do it code bullet style where he actually codes up his own game engine. So let's start with the central piece, which is the ball. Or is it a cube? Let's go with a square. And it needs to move, so we'll add some random initial velocity. No, and we lost it. Okay, so we need some walls to keep the ball inside. And that's more like it, although we need to respawn the ball if it hits the bottom. Okay, and now it's time to add the paddle, which will eventually be our AI. Now in this version, I'm just going to have the paddle move at a constant speed without any inertia. Now I should probably mention that if you're trying to code up a game in Unity for the first time, you somehow end up implementing some pretty epic but useless features. For example, having your agent start floating whenever it hits something. I mean, it's not that big of a deal apart from making the game slightly unplayable. Okay, take two. I finally figured out that Unity has a physics engine which was messing with the paddle. So after disabling that, it's now working fine and we can add the bricks for us to destroy. Now I'm just going to keep it simple with 8 bricks in each of the 6 rows. And the functionality is pretty much working now. And finally, let's just add some of those visual touches for that nostalgic effect. And we've got our Atari breakout game. Now it's time to add the AI that can control the paddle and learn how to destroy those bricks. Now, when it comes to designing a neural network to play a game, we need to figure out what information we need to give it about the game at the current time step in order for it to decide what action it's going to take. So if we consider how you or I would play the game, we would basically need to look at the screen to figure out which direction the ball is headed and then use that to decide whether to push the paddle left or right to stop the ball from hitting the bottom. So the input is the current state of the game and the output is an action of left, right or stay put. Now rather than going straight into using the raw pixels for the state, I'm just going to use a simplified state to see if this actually works before I spend a month training this on my 2012 MacBook Pro. So to figure out what we need for the state, when we look at the screen, we would first want to know the location of the ball. So let's take the x and y coordinates of the ball's position. But we also want to know which direction it's moving in if we want to predict where it might end up. So let's also take the x and y components of the velocity. Then we also want to know where the paddle is on the horizontal axis in order to move it under the ball. So that's going in too. Then the last thing we would need to know about a game state is which bricks still remain to be destroyed. And for this, we can actually use a single true or false value for each of the 48 bricks, where a 1 means the brick is still active and 0 indicates that it was destroyed. So that's basically our input state, but there's one final thing that our neural network needs in order to learn how to get better at playing the game, and that is the reward signal. And this is a single value that we give to the neural network after each action it produces from a state, in order to tell it how good or bad that action was. So basically, if the paddle hits the ball so that the ball then hits a brick, it should get a positive reward like plus one. But if the paddle screws up and lets the ball hit the bottom, then it should get a negative reward like negative one for each brick remaining, since we also want to encourage the AI to get as many bricks in each episode. So now with the state, action and the reward function figured out, we can now start to code up our neural network. So for this, we'll start up our newly created Unity game in Python and basically turn it into an open AI gym environment so that I can steal the double deep Q network that I coded up in one of my previous tutorial videos. And I'll of course need to translate this to TensorFlow 2.0, which actually makes things a lot cleaner than before. And by the way, this is all available in the source code linked in the description below, so don't be trying to get all this down. 
Now this is a very basic neural network implementation that I originally made for the carpool environment in OpenAI Gym, so even I'm curious about whether this will actually work here. But anyways, let's start training this thing. So at the start, it's pretty much playing randomly to explore the various possible actions and their consequences, which pretty much involves a lot of dying. But occasionally it will be in the right place at the right time and save the ball and not die. And this goes on for a few hundred episodes until episode 900, when we start to see signs of it learning to go towards the ball as it comes down. But it gets distracted easily. Now at 1100 episodes of training, it starts to get the hang of it, but we then also discover the glitches that my epic lack of Unity skills have implemented. Seriously, this paddle has it way too easy. Now at 1500 episodes, our AI is finally getting its act together and becoming more stable. and it eventually manages to break out, but then it conveniently reaches that rebellious teenage phase and it's like, nope. Okay, 1700 episodes now, and at this point episodes are taking a lot longer since the paddle is getting better, even where it manages to get the ball to rebound off the top wall onto a bunch of bricks. Now at episode 1900, we're getting to the last few bricks more and more often. Okay, one more brick left. Come on, don't let me down. No, you had one job. Okay, so we're back again at episode 2000, a final 100 episodes of training later. And we're pretty much hitting the ball everywhere except where the last few bricks are. Uh, I'm pretty much done training this after like 24 hours now. But okay, we're finally down to the last three. Okay, now down to the last two. Come on, don't make me train you for another thousand episodes. Oh yes, finally. So after 2000 episodes of training, it barely learned how to keep the ball in play long enough to eventually destroy all of the bricks. Not bad for a first attempt with a minimal Q learning agent, although with a few enhancements to the reinforcement learning algorithm, we might eventually be able to get that superhuman performance. So that will be a future video, but for now, you can actually have a go at training this yourself from the source code linked in the description below, which has the complete neural network implementation in TensorFlow 2.0 and in PyTorch. And I've also included a bunch of links to tutorial videos on Q-learning. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and there will be more videos on neural networks playing games coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye.